The European Central Bank is the central bank for the euro and administers monetary policy of the eurozone, which consists of 18 EU member states and is one of the largest currency areas in the world. It is one of the world's most important central banks and is one of the seven institutions of the European Union listed in the Treaty on European Union. The capital stock of the bank is owned by the central banks of all 28 EU member states. The Treaty of Amsterdam established the bank in 1998, and it is headquartered in Frankfurt, Germany. As of 2011 the president of the ECB is Mario Draghi, former governor of the Bank of Italy. The bank currently occupies the Euro Tower while new headquarters are built. The owners and shareholders of the European Central Bank are the central banks of the 28 member states of the EU. The primary objective of the European Central Bank, as mandated in Article 2 of the Statute of the ECB, is to maintain price stability within the Eurozone. The basic tasks, as defined in Article 3 of the Statute, are to define and implement the monetary policy for the Eurozone, to conduct foreign exchange operations to take care of the foreign reserves of the European system of central banks and operation of the financial markets infrastructure under the TARGET2 payments system and the technical platform for settlement of securities in Europe. The ECB has, under Article 16 of his statute, the exclusive right to authorize the issuance of euro banknotes. Member states can issue euro coins, but the amount must be authorized by the ECB beforehand. The ECB is governed by European law directly, but its setup resembles that of a corporation in the sense that the ECB has shareholders and stock capital. Its capital is €5 billion Euro held by the national central banks of the member states as shareholders. The initial capital allocation key was determined in 1998 on the basis of the state's population and GDP, but the key is adjustable. Shares in the ECB are not transferable and cannot be used as collateral. History. The European Central Bank is the de facto successor of the European Monetary Institute. The EMI was established at the start of the second stage of the EU's Economic and Monetary Union to handle the transitional issues of states adopting the euro and prepare for the creation of the ECB and European system of central banks. The EMI itself took over from the earlier European Monetary Cooperation Fund. The ECB formally replaced the EMI on June 1, 1998 by virtue of the Treaty on European Union, however it did not exercise its full powers until the introduction of the Euro on January 1, 1999, signalling the third stage of EMU. The bank was the final institution needed for EMU, as outlined by the EMU reports of Pierre Werner and President Jacques Delors. It was established on June 1, 1998. The first president of the bank was Wim Duesenberg, the former president of the Dutch Central Bank and the European Monetary Institute. While Duesenberg had been the head of the EMI just before the ECB came into existence, the French government wanted Jean-Claude Trichet, former head of the French Central Bank, to be the ECB's first president. The French argued that since the ECB was to be located in Germany, its president should be French. This was opposed by German. Dutch and Belgian governments who saw Duesenberg as a guarantor of a strong euro. Tensions were abated by a gentleman's agreement in which Duesenberg would stand down before the end of his mandate, to be replaced by Trichet. Trichet replaced Duesenberg as president in November 2003. There had also been tension over the ECB's executive board, with the United Kingdom demanding a seat even though it had not joined the single currency. Under pressure from France, Three seats were assigned to the largest members, France, Germany, and Italy. Spain also demanded and obtained a seat. Despite such a system of appointment the board asserted its independence early on in resisting calls for interest rates and future candidates to it. When the ECB was created, it covered a eurozone of 11 members. Since then, Greece joined in January 2001, Slovenia in January 2007, Cyprus and Malta in January 2008, Slovakia in January 2009, Estonia in January 2011 and Latvia in January 2014, enlarging the bank's scope and the membership of its governing council. On December 1, 2009, the Treaty of Lisbon entered into force, ECB according to the Article 13 of TEU, 
gained official status of an EU institution. In September 2011, when German appointee to the Governing Council and Executive Board, Jawan Quarter GN Stark, resigned in protest of the ECB's bond buying program, Financial Times Deutschland called it the end of the ECB as we know it referring to its perceived hawkish stance on inflation and its historical Bundesbank influence. On November 1, 2011, Mario Draghi replaced Jean-Claude Trichet as president of the ECB. In April 2011, the ECB raised interest rates for the first time since 2008 from 1% to 1.25%, with a further increase to 1.50% in July 2011. However, in 2012 a Euro 2013 ECB sharply lowered interest rates to encourage economic growth, reaching the historically low 0.25% in November 2013. Powers and Objectives Objective The primary objective of the European Central Bank, as laid down in Article 127, 1, of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, is to maintain price stability within the Eurozone. The Governing Council in October 1998 defined price stability as inflation of around 2%, a euro or a year-on-year -year increase in the harmonized index of consumer prices for the euro area of below 2% a euro and added that price stability a euro was to be maintained over the medium term a euro. Unlike for example the United States Federal Reserve Bank, the ECB has only one primary objective but this objective has never been defined in statutory law and the HICP target can be termed ad hoc. The Governing Council confirmed this definition in May 2003 following a thorough evaluation of the ECB's monetary policy strategy. On that occasion, the Governing Council clarified that a euro OE in the pursuit of price stability, it aims to maintain inflation rates below, but close to, 2% over the medium term a euro. All lending to credit institutions must be collateralized as required by Article 18 of the Statute of the ESCB. The Governing Council clarification has little force in law. Without prejudice to the objective of price stability, the treaty also states that the ESCB shall support the general economic policies in the Union with a view to contributing to the achievement of the objectives of the Union. Basic Tasks the basic tasks of the ECB are to define and implement the monetary policy for the Eurozone, to conduct foreign exchange operations, to take care of the foreign reserves of the European system of central banks and to promote smooth operation of the financial markets infrastructure under the TARGET2 payment system and being currently developed technical platform for settlement of securities in Europe. Further tasks, among others, include the exclusive right to authorize the issuance of euro banknotes. Member states can issue euro coins, but the amount must be authorized by the ECB beforehand. The ECB shall also collect statistical information to fulfill the tasks of the European system of central banks, and contribute to financial stability and supervision. Considerations on ECB's monetary policy, in US-style central banking, Liquidity is furnished to the economy primarily through the purchase of treasury bonds by the Federal Reserve System. The euro system uses a different method. There are about 1,500 eligible banks which may bid for short-term repo contracts of two weeks to three months duration. The banks in effect borrow cash and must pay it back. The short durations allow interest rates to be adjusted continually. When the repo notes come due the participating banks bid again. An increase in the quantity of notes offered at auction allows an increase in liquidity in the economy. A decrease has the contrary effect. The contracts are carried on the asset side of the European Central Bank's balance sheet and the resulting deposits in member banks are carried as a liability. In layman terms, the liability of the central bank is money, and an increase in deposits in member banks, carried as a liability by the central bank means that more money has been put into the economy. To qualify for participation in the auctions, banks must be able to offer proof of appropriate collateral in the form of loans to other entities. These can be the public debt of member states, but a fairly wide range of private banking securities are also accepted. The fairly stringent membership requirements for the European Union, especially with regard to sovereign debt as a percentage of each member state's gross domestic product, are designed to ensure that assets offered to the bank as collateral are, at least in theory, 
all equally good, and all equally protected from the risk of inflation. Organization, the ECB has three decision-making bodies, that take all the decisions with the objective of fulfilling the ECB's mandate, the Executive Board, the Governing Council, and, the General Council. Decision-making bodies of the ECB, the Executive Board. The Executive Board is responsible for the implementation of monetary policy and the day-to-day -day running of the bank. It can issue decisions to national central banks and may also exercise powers delegated to it by the Governing Council. It is composed of the President of the Bank, the Vice President and four other members. They are all appointed for non-renewable terms of eight years. They are appointed from among persons of recognized standing and professional experience in monetary or banking matters by common accord of the governments of the member states at the level of heads of state or government, on a recommendation from the Council, after it has consulted the European Parliament and the Governing Council of the ECB. The Executive Board normally meets every Tuesday. Jose Copyright Manuel Gonzalez Paramo, a Spanish member of the Executive Board since June 2004, was due to leave the board in early June 2012 and no replacement had been named as of late May 2012. The Spanish had nominated Barcelona-born Antonio Zar in Zdevicua plus or minus a, an ECB veteran who heads its legal department as Gonzalez Paramo's replacement as early as January 2012 but alternatives from Luxembourg, Finland, and Slovenia were put forward no decision made by May. After a long political battle, Luxembourg's Yves Mersch, was appointed as Gonzalez Paramo's replacement. The Governing Council, the Governing Council is the main decision-making body of the Eurosystem. It comprises the members of the Executive Board and the Governors of the National Central Banks of the Euro-area countries. The fact that the Council's minutes are not published has raised controversy in some financial circles. The General Council, the General Council is a body dealing with transitional issues of Euro adoption, for example, fixing the exchange rates of currencies being replaced by the Euro. It will continue to exist until all EU member states adopt the Euro at which point it will be dissolved. It is composed of a president and vice president together with the governors of all of the EU's national central banks. Shareholders, although the ECB is governed by European law directly and thus not by corporate law applying to private law companies, its setup resembles that of a corporation in the sense that the ECB has shareholders and stock capital. Its capital is €5 billion Euros which is held by the national central banks of the member states as shareholders. The initial capital allocation key was determined in 1998 on the basis of the state's population and GDP, but the key is adjustable. Shares in the ECB are not transferable and cannot be used as collateral. All national central banks that own a share of the ECB capital stock as of January 1, 2011 are listed below. Non-euro area NCBs are required to pay up only a very small percentage of their subscribed capital, which accounts for the different magnitudes of euro area and non-euro area total paid up capital. Independence, political independence, the independence of the ECB is instrumental in maintaining price stability. Not only must the bank not seek influence, but EU institutions and national governments are bound by the treaties to respect the ECB's independence. To offer some accountability, the ECB is bound to publish reports on its activities and has to address its annual report to the European Parliament, the European Commission, the Council of the European Union and the European Council. The European Parliament also gets to question and then issue its opinion on candidates to the Executive Board. The governors of national central banks represented in the Governing Council of the ECB are appointed by their national executives, and can be reappointed. In spite of the fact that voting inside the ECB is secret, there is some evidence pointing in the direction of governing council members voting along national lines. Financial independence The ECB's financial independence means that the ECB has its own budget. Its capital is subscribed and paid up by the euro area central banks. Other provisions The euro system is functionally, that is operationally, independent. Governors of national central banks and members of the executive board of the ECB have security of tenure, NCB governors have a minimum term of office of five years. 
members of the executive board have a non-renewable term of office of eight years. Their removal from office can only be in the event of incapacity or grave misconduct. European Sovereign Debt Crisis From late 2009, Fears of a sovereign debt crisis developed among fiscally conservative investors concerning some European states, with the situation becoming particularly tense in early 2010. This included Eurozone members Greece, Ireland and Portugal and also some EU countries outside the area. Iceland, the country which experienced the largest crisis in 2008 when its entire international banking system collapsed has emerged less affected by the sovereign debt crisis as the government refused to bail the banks out, and has begun to prosecute those involved in the collapse. In the EU, especially in countries where sovereign debts have increased sharply due to bank bailouts, a crisis of confidence has emerged with a widening of bond yield spreads and risk insurance on credit default swaps between these countries and other EU members, most importantly Germany. To be included in the Eurozone, the countries had to fulfill certain convergence criteria, but the meaningfulness of such criteria were diminished by the fact they have not been applied to different countries with the same strictness. Causes the principal monetary policy tool of the European Central Bank is collateralized borrowing or repo agreements. These tools are also used by United States Federal Reserve Bank, but the Fed does more direct purchasing of financial assets than its European counterpart. The collateral used by the ECB is typically high-quality public and private sector debt. The criteria for determining high quality for public debt have been preconditions for membership in the European Union. Total debt must not be too large in relation to gross domestic product, for example, and deficits in any given year must not become too large. Though these criteria are fairly simple, a number of accounting techniques may hide the underlying reality of fiscal solvency a euro, or the lack of same. In central banking, the privileged status of the central bank is that it can make as much money as it deems needed. In the United States Federal Reserve Bank, the Federal Reserve buys assets, typically, bonds issued by the federal government. There is no limit on the bonds that it can buy and one of the tools at its disposal in a financial crisis is take such extraordinary measures as the purchase of large amounts of assets such as commercial paper. The purpose of such operations is to ensure that adequate liquidity is available for functioning of the financial system. Regulatory Reliance on Credit Ratings Think tanks such as the World Pensions Council have also argued that European legislators have pushed somewhat dogmatically for the adoption of the Basel II recommendations, adopted in 2005, transposed in European Union law through the Capital Requirements Directive, effective since 2008. In essence, they forced European banks, and, more importantly, the European Central Bank itself, for example, when gauging the solvency of financial institutions, to rely more than ever on standardized assessments of credit risk marketed by two non-European private agencies, Moody's and S&P. Response to the crisis There are a variety of possible responses to the problem of bad debts in a banking system. One is to induce debtors to make a greater effort to make good on their debt. With public debt this usually means getting governments to maintain debt payments while cutting back on other forms of expenditure. Such policies often involve cutting back on popular social programs. Stringent policies with regard to social expenditures and employment in the state sector have led to riots and political protests in Greece. Another response is to shift losses from the central bank to private investors who are asked to share the pain of partial defaults that take the form of rescheduling debt payments. However, if the debt rescheduling causes losses on loans held by European banks, it weakens the private banking system, which then puts pressure on the central bank to come to the aid of those banks. Private sector bondholders are an integral part of the public and private banking system. Another possible response is for wealthy member countries to guarantee or purchase the debt of countries that have defaulted or are likely to default. This alternative requires that the tax revenues and credit of the wealthy member countries be used to refinance the previous borrowing of the weaker member countries and is politically controversial. Reluctance in Germany to take on the burden of financing or guaranteeing the debts of weaker countries has led to public reports that some elites in Germany would prefer to see Greece, Portugal, and even Italy leave the Eurozone temporarily. 
Until recently, Greek Eurozone exit was rejected by German Chancellor Angela Merkel. The German government's current position is, to keep Greece within the Eurozone, but not at any cost. If the worst comes to the worst, priority will be given to the Euro's stability. Bond purchase. In contrast to the Fed, the ECB normally does not buy bonds outright. The normal procedure used by the ECB for manipulating the money supply has been via the so-called refinancing facilities. In these facilities, bonds are not purchased but used in reverse transactions, repos, or collateralized loans. These two transactions are similar, that is bonds are used as collaterals for loans, the difference being of legal nature. In the repos the ownership of the collateral changes to the ECB until the loan is repaid. This changed with the recent sovereign debt crisis. The ECB always could, and through the late summer of 2011 did, purchase bonds issued by the weaker states even though it assumes, in doing so, the risk of a deteriorating balance sheet. ECB buying focused primarily on Spanish and Italian debt. Certain techniques can minimize the impact. Purchases of Italian bonds by the central bank, for example, were intended to dampen international speculation and strengthen portfolios in the private sector and also the central bank. The assumption is that speculative activity will decrease over time and the value of the assets increase. Such a move is similar to what the U.S. Federal Reserve did in buying subprime mortgages in the crisis of 2008, except in the European crisis, the purchases are of member state debt. The risk of such a move is that it could diminish the value of the currency. On the other hand, certain financial techniques can reduce the impact of such purchases on the currency. One is sterilization, in which highly valued assets are sold at the same time that the weaker assets are purchased, which keeps the money supply neutral. Another technique is simply to accept the bad assets as long-term collateral to be held until their market value stabilizes. This would imply, as a quid pro quo, adjustments in taxation and expenditure in the economies of the weaker states to improve the perceived value of the assets. When the ECB buys bonds from other creditors such as European banks, the ECB does not disclose the transaction prices. Creditors profit of bargains with bonds sold at prices that exceed markets quotes. As of June 18, 2012, ECB in total had spent a 212.1 BN for bond purchases covering outright debt as part of its SMP running since May 2010. On September 6, 2012, the ECB announced a new plan for buying bonds from Eurozone countries. The duration of the previous SMP was temporary, while the new outright monetary transactions program has no ex-ante time or size limit. Long-term refinancing operation, though the ECB's main refinancing operations are from repo auctions with a weekly maturity and monthly maturation, the ECB now conducts long-term refinancing operations, maturing after 3 months, 6 months, 12 months and 36 months. In 2003, refinancing by LTROs amounted to 45 BLN euro which is about 20% of overall liquidity provided by the ECB. The ECB's first supplementary longer-term refinancing operation with a six-month maturity was announced March 2008. Previously the longest tender offered was three months. It announced two three-month and one six-month full allotment of long-term refinancing operations. The first tender was settled April 3, and was more than four times oversubscribed. The A25 billion auction drew bids amounting to a 103.1 billion from 177 banks. Another six-month tender was allotted on July 9, again to the amount of a 25 billion. The first 12-month LTRO in June 2009 had close to 1,100 bidders. On December 21, 2011 the bank instituted a program of making low-interest loans with a term of three years and 1% interest to European banks accepting loans from the portfolio of the banks as collateral. Loans totaling a 489.2 BN were announced. The loans were not offered to European states, but government securities issued by European states would be acceptable collateral as would mortgage-backed securities and other commercial paper that can be demonstrated to be secure. 
The program was announced on December 8, 2011 but observers were surprised by the volume of the loans made when it was implemented. Under its LTRO it loaned a 489 BN to 523 banks for an exceptionally long period of three years at a rate of just 1%. The by far biggest amount of a 325 BN was tapped by banks in Greece, Ireland, Italy and Spain. This way the ECB tried to make sure that banks have enough cash to pay off a 200 BN of their own maturing debts in the first three months of 2012 and at the same time keep operating and loaning to businesses so that a credit crunch does not choke off economic growth. It also hoped that banks would use some of the money to buy government bonds, effectively easing the debt crisis. On February 29, 2012, the ECB held a second 36-month auction, LTRO2, providing Eurozone banks with further of $529.5 billion in low-interest loans. This second long-term refinancing operation auction saw 800 banks take part. This can be compared with the 523 banks that took part in the first auction on December 21, 2011. Net new borrowing under the February auction was around a 313 billion a euro out of a total of a 256 bn existing ECB lending a 215 bn was rolled into LTRO2. Foreign exchange operations on September 22, 2000, the ECB, together with the monetary authorities of the US, Japan, the UK and Canada, initiated concerted intervention in the foreign exchange markets. The ECB intervened again in early November 2000. Powers and objectives during the European banking crisis, the economic and financial crisis that began in 2008 has revealed some relative weaknesses in the sovereign debt of such member countries as Portugal, Ireland, Greece and Spain. These securities are not limited to the countries of issue, but held in many cases by banks in other member states. To the extent that the banks authorized to borrow from the ECB have compromised collateral, their ability to borrow from the ECBA euro and thus the liquidity of the economic system a euro is impaired. This threat has drawn the ECB into rescue operations. But weak sovereign debt is not the only source of weakness in the ECB's operations, as the collapse of the market in US dollar-denominated collateralized debt obligations has also led to large-scale interventions in cooperation with the Federal Reserve. Rescue operations involving sovereign debt have included temporarily moving bad or weak assets off the balance sheets of the weak member banks into the balance sheets of the European Central Bank. Such action is viewed as monetization and can be seen as an inflationary threat, whereby the strong member countries of the ECB shoulder the burden of monetary expansion to save the weak member countries. Most central banks prefer to move weak assets off their balance sheets with some kind of agreement as to how the debt will continue to be serviced. This preference has typically led the ECB to argue that the weaker member countries must allocate considerable national income to servicing debts, scale back a wide range of national expenditures to make their payments. The European Central Bank had stepped up the buying of member nations' debt. In response to the crisis of 2010, some proposals have surfaced for a collective European bond issue that would allow the central bank to purchase a European version of U.S. Treasury bills. To make European sovereign debt assets more similar to a U.S. Treasury, a collective guarantee of the member state solvency would be necessary. But the German government has resisted this proposal, and other analyses indicate that the sickness of the euro is due to the linkage between sovereign debt and failing national banking systems. If the European Central Bank were to deal directly with failing banking systems sovereign debt would not look as leveraged relative to national income in the financially weaker member states. On December 17, 2010, the ECB announced that it was going to double its capitalization. The 16 central banks of the member states would transfer assets to the ledger of the ECB. In 2011, the European member states may need to raise as much as two US dollars a trillion in debt. Some of this will be new debt and some will be previous debt that is rolled over as older loans reach maturity. In either case, the ability to raise this money depends on the confidence of investors in the European financial system. 
the ability of the European Union to guarantee its members' sovereign debt obligations have direct implications for the core assets of the banking system that support the euro. The bank must also cooperate within the EU and internationally with third bodies and entities. Finally, it contributes to maintaining a stable financial system and monitoring the banking sector. The latter can be seen, for example, in the bank's intervention during the subprime mortgage crisis when it loaned billions of euros to banks to stabilize the financial system. In December 2007, the ECB decided in conjunction with the Federal Reserve System under a program called Term Auction Facility to improve dollar liquidity in the eurozone and to stabilize the money market. In late May 2012, looking ahead to further challenges with Greece, Bundesbank chief and ECB council member Jens Wiedemann pointed out that the council could veto emergency liquidity assistance to, for instance, Greece through a TWO a Euro third majority of the council. If Greece chose to default on its debts yet wanted to stay in the euro, the ELA would be one of the ways to accommodate the country's and its bank's liquidity needs or, alternatively, to precipitate departure. On October 31, 2012, ECB announced it has phased out one of the crisis measures aimed at supporting the shaky banking system of the 17-country Eurozone. European Financial Stability Facility On May 9, 2010, the 27 member states of the European Union agreed to incorporate the European Financial Stability Facility. The EFSF's mandate is to safeguard financial stability in Europe by providing financial assistance to Eurozone member states. The EFSF is authorized to use the following instruments linked to appropriate conditionality, to provide loans to countries in financial difficulties. To intervene in the primary and secondary debt markets. Intervention in the secondary debt market will be only on the basis of an ECB analysis recognizing the existence of exceptional financial market circumstances and risks to financial stability. Act on the basis of a precautionary program finance recapitalizations of financial institutions through loans to governments, the EFSF is backed by guarantee commitments from the Eurozone member states for a total of a 780 BN and has a lending capacity of a 440 BN. In 2011, it was assigned the best possible credit rating, location. The bank is based in Frankfurt, the largest financial center in the Eurozone. Its location in the city is fixed by the Amsterdam Treaty along with other major institutions. In the city, the bank currently occupies Frankfurt's Eurotower until its purpose-built headquarters are built. In 1999 an international architectural competition was launched by the bank to design a new building. It was won by a Vienna-based architectural office named Coop Himmelbau. The building will be approximately 180 meters tall and will be accompanied with other secondary buildings on a landscaped site on the site of the former wholesale markets in the eastern part of Frankfurt am Main. The main construction began in October 2008, with completion scheduled during 2014. It is expected that the building will become an architectural symbol for Europe and is designed to accommodate double the number of staff who operate in the Euro Tower. See also, European Banking Authority, European Financial Stability Facility, European Systemic Risk Board, Open Market Operation, References External links, European Central Bank, Official Website Central Bank Rates, Europe Interest Rates Data and Chart, New ECB Premises, Official Website The Origins and Development of the European Organizations, The European Central Bank CVCEU website. European Central Bank, History, Role and Functions, ECB website. InfoCheese, ECB, Forex-History.net, historical currency charts based on the data published daily by the ECB.